All right, here we go. All right, hello and ni hao everyone. It's Sing Tian. Today we are making a made with Lao's version of pi dan shou rou zhou or pi de shou zhou zhou in the Chinese. Just real quick, how's the audio for you on your end, Kristen? Um, it's a little bit quiet. Okay, let me toggle again. So in English, that is century egg and pork kanji. All right, let's start. So for um, our live class today, I'm going to be working off of my recipe card, which you should have a digital version of. And so as always, my recipe cards start with gathering all of our tools in one place. So this is something that really helps me get into the mindset of cooking. So, sorry for the sirens, everyone. Again, I live in New York. So, we first want um, a measuring cup for our water. So, I have actually already pre-measured out my water over here. And then we want two big bowls. Um, and one is going to be used to soak our rice. The other is going to be used to marinate our pork. So, if you haven't grabbed those yet, go ahead and get those out. So over here i have one two er two that one in big bowls we are also going to want our tablespoon and teaspoon to measure ingredients so here so go ahead and grab those and of course the secret to daddy lao's quick kanji um, which means we don't have to spend hours simmering is going to be a whisk i am actually cat sitting for my friend right now and she doesn't have a whisk unfortunately um, i just realized so i am going to be substituting two forks as a um, makeshift whisk so again, my kitchen philosophy is chap dual, um, off, not off by much. All right, and then we're gonna round it off with something to chop with. So I'm gonna use my trusty cleaver. You can use any knife you have. And then a chopping board, a ladle, um, which is to serve the kanji. Again, she doesn't have a ladle, so I'm gonna use a measuring cup to ladle the kanji out. And finally, we want a pretty large pot. So I'm gonna use that pink one over there. All right, so if you haven't gathered your tools, no worries, you can um, gather it as we are prepping our ingredients. All right, so before I start um, to go through all of the ingredients, so first things first, we're gonna do a ingredient roll call. So um, in French, this would be called mise en place. So getting all of your tools, ingredients, you know, within uh, hands reach and eye level and prepped. So as um, I'm doing this roll call, just make sure that you have all of your ingredients in front of you as well, so that when we start prepping them, um, we don't fall behind. All right, so first we are going to want half a pound of ground pork. So here I already have mine uh, measured out. So usually when I order my pork, it comes in a one pound package. So I just half that. And as a note, um, Daddy's La Daddy Lao's original recipe actually uh, has you buy pork butt and then half freeze it and then you're gonna chop it and mince it yourself. So for my adaptation of this recipe, um, uh, after talking to the Made With Lao team, they said that minced, pre-minced or ground pork is a totally fine substitute. And this kind of cuts our work in third. So we're gonna go do that. So ground pork, um, a vegetarian substitute. Uh, you can use, you know, impossible meat, which is the closest substitute I found to ground meat. Um, and you can also use diced shiitake mushrooms as well um, that are kind of like pre-browned in the skillet. But I would say either ground pork or ground impossible would be the easiest. All right. 
So apart from our ground pork, we are going to want ginger. So um, if you're gonna be really exact, it's gonna be a quarter of an ounce. But for me, that's usually about um, a tablespoon of ginger. So actually this is a little bit too much, but that's okay. Um, once we chop it up, we'll know. Okay, and then our white pepper. White pepper, bai hu jiao. We are going to want salt. So have that within hand's reach. Uh, water, I pre-measured some water over here that we'll just use. And then sesame oil, cornstarch, and baking soda. So I have my sesame oil, and this is actually potato starch, but it'll also do. And um, I ran out of baking soda, so I'm not gonna use any, but this is going to be go going in the pork marinade. Um, all right, so, so as a note, the baking soda is um, optional as well. So you mostly would use it if you were using pork butt that you're slicing yourself to make the meat a little bit more juicy. So it's all right if you don't have it or if you forgot it like me. All right, thank you. And then we want um, eight cups of water, which we are already boiling. And then we also want salt. So we already had that. We're gonna want some oil. So I have my canola oil over there. And then lastly, we are going to want our garnish. So we're going to be using, of course, century egg or pea dan. So I have mine over here. They're still wrapped up, but we're going to unwrap them together and prep them together. Um, and if you are cooking this as a vegetarian dish or a vegan dish, a good substitute for these would be pretty ripe avocados. Um, that sort of mimics the silky taste of the pea dan, the century egg. Um, and then lastly, your optional, uh, optional garnish, which raccoon hates, so if he was cooking this, he would not be using any, um, but Daddy Lao recommends scallion tong and cilantro, xiang cai. So I will only be using, whoop, I got cut off. I will only be using scallions um, for garnish today. All right, okay, so the first thing we are going to do, because for the ground pork, this is already pre-ground, we don't need to prep it, we're going to move straight to mincing our ginger. So I pretty much guesstimate um, that 0.25 ounces is about a tablespoon, so that's what I'm going to do. And so we are first going to kind of scrape off the skin of this ginger, and I'm not gonna need all of this, so probably about this much is fine. Okay. So we are going to want this ginger eventually minced, and this is gonna go into our pork marinade, which is going to make these really delicious um, little, almost like meatballs that we will be dropping into our kanji. And uh, this dish is just such a comfort dish, especially if I'm feeling sick or now that New York is getting really cold, just having the simmering pot of a jewel is really, really lovely. Okay, that's about good. So I'm gonna put that to the side. <laughs> And we are going to start mincing us some ginger. Okay. And so if you are cooking with me, you'll know that my knife skills are very mediocre, but they are getting better. So what I've learned as a beginner and now pretty intermediate cook is that you know, don't worry about speed. I'm already twice as fast as I used to be. Just worry about, you know, slow and steady. And once you get used to it, chopping this is actually very meditative. 
And this is also one of the reasons I really like using my tight bell, my cleaver, instead of, um, you know, using like a grater or a, what are those called? Like a mandolin, those fancy chopping machines, is that I can keep things really simple, put in some music while I'm cooking. Mm, it already smells really good. Okay, so basically in Chinese right now, what I'm making is up, so little pieces or little granules of ginger. So I'm just gonna give it a mince. And for my cleaver and any other knife that you use, once you get to the mincing part, you can just rock it back and forth. And this will keep your knife movements <laughs> pretty restrained so that your ginger isn't, you know, scattering everywhere. Okay, so that I think is about good. So I am actually just going to keep all of my ingredients on this cutting board. All right, we are zoomed back out. So let me just put the scraps in this plate over here. So we have our jiang, our shenjiang, our ginger now. And next, right, the white pepper, we don't need to prep. The salt, water, obviously, don't need to prep. So none of the rest of the pork marinade needs any prep. So let's just uh, move straight to our kanji and our garnish. So for our rice, we're going to wash and soak it in our next step. So we don't need to prep that. So let's just skip straight to our century egg, our star of the show. So century egg is also sometimes called 1000 year old egg. And in Chinese, it's called pi dan or leather egg. And this might not sound the, <laughs> the most enticing, but this is one of my favorite foods. So this is actually duck egg. So let me just unwrap these little suckers and I'll give you a lowdown on the history of these. So these are actually made um, of duck egg and they are cured um, via a chemical process. So these are already ready to be eaten. So basically what we're going to do in a bit is we're gonna chop two of these into little bits that are going to go into our cooked kanji. But one of them, we are actually just going to slice into wedges and have it as a topical garnish, which means that yes, you can eat them as is, you don't actually need to pre-cook them. So the reason this is, is because they are already quote unquote cooked via this chemical process where the duck egg itself is wrapped in this mixture of I believe like, you know, lye and like herbs I'm muted. Um, so that'd be lime and herbs, just a quick correction on myself. And it will, as you will soon see, result in this beautiful, like almost amber-like transformation of the um, uh, thumbai, the egg white, which will actually be very not white after we peel this. Right. So for the uninitiated, sometimes the color of the egg will throw you off. Um, I remember I have, uh, so this woman um, who I call my American grandmother, so her husband before he passed away, I called my American grandfather. So they were basically the Italian American couple who hosted my dad 
when he was a visiting scholar the first time he came to the States. And so our families remained really close. And when my mom and I joined with the Baba, my dad, in the States after immigrating, we would always go over to their house for the holiday, um, sometimes for dinner, etc. So once my parents made a dish with this century egg, so we didn't make the kanji, um, we made another uh, century egg and green pepper dish, which is delicious, um, but I think it really freaked Shirley out. She was like, oh, is this a rotten egg? No, it is not a rotten egg. As you will see, it is going to be extremely pretty. Yeah, these are almost like little <laughs> amber amulets. Okay. So that's two down. One more. Mm. You can also smell it. So these eggs are also a really lovely source of umami and usually their taste kind of speaks for itself but we do drizzle it with soy sauce as well to really bring out the creaminess of the yolk which you will see shortly once we cut it So we are going to cut one of these into wedges and set it aside. All right, so I'm gonna start with the wedges first so everyone can see what it looks like inside. Mm. So the inside is, I think it's really beautiful. You have this like creamy yolk with this um, almost like, I don't know, I feel like it looks like a, a gemstone almost, like amethyst, but not purple. Okay. And, let's and as a quick note, I've cut this particular egg into four wedges because I was just making it for me and my partner. Um, if you are making a larger batch, you can also cut the egg into much thinner wedges. Um, mostly the garnish is there for visual appeal. Um, we'll be stirring it into the kanji as we eat as well. So for more people, just make the wedges thinner. Thank you. Yeah, tripod light. So let's put this aside for garnish, <laughs> diggle, diggle, diggle. and then we are going to basically dice the rest of these or chop them into very little pieces and that's going to go in our kanji later. All right, so here we go. The other two we are going to chop into smaller pieces and they're going to be sprinkled in to our kanji once it's pretty much ready to be finished. So now the century egg is a pretty core component of this recipe. Um, of course, you can substitute, right, like other hard boiled, soft boiled egg with it, um, but the taste will be quite different. Um, so both the flavor as well as the mouthfeel, the cold gun. So I would say if you wanted to substitute, I would actually use something like ripe avocado instead um, because sort of that silky texture is going to be much closer to what we want. All right. So let me know in the chat if you guys have ever had a century egg before or pea then. So I remember 
there used to be a show, I don't know if it's live anymore, but it's called Fear Factor. It's a US show where basically contestants would be challenged to face their fears or like eat really gross things. And then if they can manage that, then I don't know, they would get like a thousand dollars or something or five thousand dollars. And there was one episode where thousand year old egg was one of the food items and the woman who was challenged was just like gagging she couldn't get it down and i was like man if i was on that show i would have been so happy because this is actually delicious but again if you don't know right the color might put you off a little bit last bit and don't worry about making these pretty because it's all going to go into the pot and kind of meld with the kanji it's gonna be so good okay so I'm just gonna put everything into this beautiful bowl that my friend Annabelle made We are going to rinse the rice um, and our water in the next step, but if you've already rinsed Perfect. it, then great, you are nope. already ahead. <laughs> nope, we're not, so that's good. <laughs> okay, yep. <laughs> All right. So now we're done with that. Let me clean up for a little bit, and then we'll move on. All right, now we are going to finish out our ingredient prep. So we've already wedged and cut into bits our pea then, our century egg. So the last thing is if you want garnish, we are going to go ahead and chop up your desired garnish. So the uh, Made With Lao recipe recommends scallions as well as cilantro. And for me, I feel like garnish is just as much about taste as it is about visuals. And I love that pop of green. So today we are just going to do scallions. And my scallions haha, are a little bit wilted, but c'est la vie. So usually garnish is just the greens, but since a lot of my greens are pretty wilted, I'm also going to be chopping up some of the whites. And we're not gonna use all of this for garnish, but I usually when I'm chopping scallions, just go ahead and chop up all of them because I know that I will be using these in so many other dishes as well. So tomorrow is actually Thanksgiving, so I will be cooking some tomato and eggs stir fry, and um, I'm going to be making this cucumber salad and cold tossed chicken to bring over to uh, my boyfriend's sisters. So that's where we will be spending turkey day. Um, I actually ended up also bringing a big pot of this kanji over for um, the day after Thanksgiving. So this batch actually made um, way more than John and I could eat. So um, we had it sit overnight, we brought it over, and then we heated it up again. So if you are going to be making this a day in advance, you can totally do that. Just know that the kanji will kind of congeal a bit overnight. And so when you're reheating it, you're going to want to add more water. But other than that, it keeps quite well for a day or two. And then for this, I'll chop it into slightly larger bits. So these are going to be used for reference in dishes later. Oh, I'm such a baby when it comes to chopping up onions. Even green onions make me tear up. All right, let me pause this real quick and uh, splash some water into my face. I'll be right back. All right, so now that we have prepped all of our ingredients, we are going to start our kanji. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat eight cups of water to boiling in a large stock pot with a lid. So I've already put my water in my pot, so now I'm just gonna turn the heat onto high. Am 
my goodness, gas stoves always <laughs> give me a little fright when you turn it on because the like the fire goes woof. <laughs> um, I don't know why it worked. Anyway, okay. So while that is heating, just put the pot on. Sorry, not the pot on, the lid on. We are going to uh, wash our rice. So multitask. All right, so we are now waiting for our rice. So this is where we wash our rice. Um, I am very bad at multitasking in the kitchen. So if I know I have to do it, I basically have to draw the process out for myself, which is how these recipe cards came to be. So um, once you've put your water right on boil, come over to the sink and we'll rinse our rice together water to boil. So while that's happening, we are going to wash our rice um, three times, which is what Daddy Lao uh, recommends. So I'm going to do that three times, but honestly, probably the next time I make this, I'm only going to wash it once. <laughs> All right. So Daddy Lao recommends that you wash it until the water runs pretty clear. So you see right now the water is kind of milky. So it's one... Two, it's already a little bit more clear, but there's definitely still a lot of starch there because the water is still milky. So third time is the charm. Oh yeah, and it's already much more clear. So again, we wash our rice before it's cooked, not after, <laughs> given that um, infamous video. All right. So we are first going to put our salt and our oil in before we submerge it again to let it soak. All right, we are back at our workstation. So we've already washed our rice since three times. So now we're going to add our yen. So our salt over here for the kanji, as well as our oil. So we're gonna want one teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of oil. So let's do that first. I have my he 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 my salt in my little bottle. So one teaspoon. Okay. And then we are going to want an equal amount of vegetable oil into our rice. Drizzle that in. And then we want to cover this with enough water so that it just barely covers the top. So over here, I have about a cup. So let's put that in. Okay, so that looks good. Everything is covered. So for my bowl, this just needed a little less than one cup. So we're gonna let that soak for a bit and wait for our water to come to a rolling boil. So here, um, I'm gonna pause for a little bit to take a um, step back and see where everyone is at. And then once everyone um, is at a rolling boil with their water and um, their rice mixture is all soaked up, we are going to move on to putting this in our water and then starting our pork marinade. All right, so press pause. All right. Yeah. So all right, so just checking on you all, uh, House Kristen, how is your water looking that is in your pot? Um, I think we got it boiling. We started it when we started the class. So we're, oh. we're boiling. Perfect. Okay. Then we'll just zoom straight. Up. <laughs> yeah. So the whole like water boiling thing, um, what I usually do is I have an electric kettle. And so I'll like have a kettle full of water going. And usually I'll just like pour that into the pot and it speeds up the process immensely. Now let's check on our water. Run it again at a rolling boil. So 
Whoa, whoa. Okay, <laughs> that was a lot of steam onto the camera. But yes, this is at a rolling boil. So what we're going to do after I carefully let the steam out that way is we are going to add our soaked rice mixture. So here it is. And very carefully, without splashing ourselves, we're just going to add it into our water. So there's still a little bit in there. I'm just gonna scoop it out. Ugh. Watch my clumsy paws drop this into the water. That would be very unfortunate. All right, so now our rice mixture with the salt and the oil is in our pot and we are going to spring it back to a boil. Okay. So put this on to help it bring it to the oil faster and we are going to take a little tour around the apartment while we're waiting for that to continue to boil. So here we go. <laughs> we have a lovely, lovely lady over here. Hello, yeehaw. Sleepy? <laughs> Wanna cook some kanji with me? Just a prairie. And our other little friend. I actually don't know where he is. He might be napping somewhere. So yeah, here's some Christmas music pre-Thanksgiving. I'm one of those people who just absolutely loves holiday music. All right, let's see where we're at. So I think I hear it already. It's at a rolling boil. Perfect. So we are going to want to give this one single stir, otherwise, it is going to stick. So now that that is stirred, we are going to turn our fire down to low. Okay. So just to give you a look at what is happening, um, we've already given it a single stir and now we are going to replace the lid while leaving a tiny crack for the steam to escape. And we are basically going to cook it for 20 minutes. And I've turned the fire down um, to a little bit lower. Um, not completely low, but it's just not at a super high boil anymore. So we're gonna set. So for this range, I actually had it at medium low. Basically, you want the um, kanji to be cooking consistently, but like not so much that it's going to burn. Sure, we're turning it to medium, and now it is cooking again with the pot lid on with a little bit of a crack. All right, so while that is cooking, we are going to start working on our pork marinade. So some people just, you know, <laughs> Look at the clock and remember, I can never do that. So I am going to actually set a timer. So there we go. I'm actually going to set it to about 18 minutes because it's already been about two minutes since I put the kanji on to cook. All right, so now pork marinade. All right, so here we have our pre-ground pork. And we're just gonna go to this section of the recipe card and put everything here that we already pre-prepped into our bowl. So we have our half a pound of ground pork. Now we're gonna add our 0.25 ounce or about a tablespoonful of ginger. Oops, but then glue. Okay. 
And next, we are going to add our bai hu jiao or white pepper. So about a quarter of a teaspoon. And again, I'm gonna guesstimate, this is about a teaspoon. So I'm gonna put what I think is a quarter in. And that is too much. So I'm gonna put half of this in and then put the half back in my <laughs> jar. All right, JK, I actually just dumped it into the sink. <laughs> um, all right, so after our white pepper, we are going to add our salt. So our... As a quick note, the salt here um, is... I would say on the slightly heavier side, um, if you're not sure how salty you want your kanji, I would probably just go with a teaspoon of salt at this point because you can always add a little bit more salt afterwards. It's hard to take salinity out. Um, but um, this is essentially, we're making a meat marinade that's very similar to what we would put inside dumplings. But instead of that going into a dumpling shell, we're gonna be dropping it into our kanji later. So keep going. Meat is going to be a little bit more salty because it's going to add really that um, taste to our kanji. So we're gonna put one and a half teaspoons in. I'm gonna have to refill my little salt bottle soon. Okay, so e. Oh, that was a heaping teaspoon. So that's one and that's about a half. So that was our salt. And next we are going to want our sesame oil, our jima yo. So one teaspoon of that. So before we put the sesame oil in, um, I'm going to uh, do the step that I actually skipped in this video because I forgot. So you're also going to want to put about two tablespoons of water in as well, which is going to help um, you mix the marinade and the pork up. So go ahead and add your water. And then once you've done that, uh, just follow along as I continue to add the oil. Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Drizzle it in. And lastly, we are going to put our cornstarch in, which is going to make it very tender, and then also baking soda if you have it. So I'm going to skip the baking soda today because <laughs> I don't have it, and um, that's all right. Okay, so here we have our cornstarch. All right, let me double check again that it's a tablespoon measurement and not teaspoon. I always second guess myself. All right, so, ooh, come on, focus. Yes, two tablespoons, all right. This is why I really like my recipe cards. Okay, one, two. And then we are just going to mix, mix, mix this. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and hua. So mix. And what the cornstarch is gonna do, and actually what I used was potato starch, but they accomplish the same thing, is it's going to make the meat pretty tender and really yummy. Mm, I can already smell it. The sesame oil makes it so fragrant. Okay, so we're gonna keep mixing. Okay. So that's about good and just set it aside. So once the kanji is almost ready, we're gonna start dropping spoonfuls of this inside. Okay, 
So let's just review what we're going to do for the rest of our time together, which is, yeah, we're almost done. So again, we are waiting for our kanji to cook and basically have that rice bloom. And we have about 12 minutes left on our timer. All right, so what shall we do as we wait? Hmm. So I actually um, had used to have a lot of trouble <laughs> with uh, recipes that required waiting around because I would get distracted, um, ADHD again, and you know I would forget that it's cooking, um, and therefore things would burn. And that's one of the reasons why actually I'm really happy that I started with Sichuan recipes because for a lot of um, especially beginner Sichuanese recipes everything once you prep it is like slam bam thank you ma'am right you throw it into a wok you stir fry it and it's ready to serve but what i have been doing is finding videos that are just about at that 20 minute mark um to yeah to watch while uh, i wait so we have about 10 more minutes left so i am actually going to find um, a Chinese language or bilingual video from one of the YouTube vloggers that I follow. And that is actually going to be made with Lao. So this recipe, um, as you know, I adapted alongside uh, Made with Lao, which is one of my absolute favorite um, YouTube channels for Chinese and Cantonese cooking. So to wait for our rice and congee to finish up, we are going to watch the Daddy Lao recipe. Oh, I forgot to turn on my camera. All right, here we go. What's up, everyone? Today we're making century egg and pork congee, the OG Cantonese rice porridge. Sometimes congee takes hours to make, but my dad's got a special trick to cut the time down to just about 30 minutes. We'll start this heartwarming classic with my dad's special technique to prepare the rice. And thanks to Green Chef for sponsoring this video. <laughs> Just like when we're cooking rice, we're going to wash the rice three times, making sure to pour out the starchy water and using fresh water each time. What kind of rice do you use? Oh, we'll let the rice soak a bit and move on to an optional ingredient that adds a ton of flavor, dried scallops. We'll break apart roughly one ounce of dried scallops into bits using pliers to make it easier. We'll wash the scallops two times, in the same way as the rice, draining the water each time. Now we're ready to start cooking. We'll heat eight cups of water on high until it boils. Once the water boils, we'll carefully put our soaked rice in the pot. Can you make it with previously cooked rice? Huh? 
，再搞佢咧，佢就容易會唔係以後會黐底噶啦，知道嘛？中火煲佢，將離開啲唔得辣 ，keep 住咁滾就得噶啦。Kanji, or zuk in Cantonese, is a super common Chinese comfort food. But because it originates from a time when people were poor and made big pots of kanji to make their rice last longer, it is generally considered bad luck to eat it during Chinese New Year. However, it's not quite that simple. So I asked my parents about it. Are you not supposed to eat this for Chinese New Year? 过咗十三就煲中啦。Two days before the last day. 唔系啊，唔好，即系咁样讲咧，习惯就我哋乡下啲人咧，十三之前就唔煲粥。爹哋话咧，佢话喺十三咧，即系过咗。年初一、十三日咧，如果啲人問佢食乜嘢，今日佢話食十三咁啊，咁啊即係煲粥啦。十三就係食粥啦。十三就知道係食粥啦。While even my parents aren't sure of the significance of the thirteenth day, others suggest that after twelve days of eating rich foods, the thirteenth day is the appropriate time to cleanse the body with a simple rice kanji. That's not to say that it doesn't have flavor, because people love the savory pork and century egg in this dish. We'll talk more about that classic Chinese ingredient in a bit. Next, my dad will show you the best way to cut the pork for this dish. 我今日咧就係用半磅薄頭肉咁樣切，首先咧切成片先，呢只好靚呢個豬肉。如果你雪硬嘅話，切咧就容易切啲咯。We're using half-thawed pork here to make the cutting much easier. After cutting the pork into slices, we'll have some pieces that are too thick by cutting them horizontally. 嗱，一片片之後咧，切咗條條嚇。Then we'll lay down the slices and cut them into strips. I also wanted to make a special shout out to thank all of our wonderful Patreon supporters for helping bring this video to life. If you enjoy our videos and are interested in supporting us directly, head on over to patreon.com slash madewithlao to learn more. Then we'll rotate and dice the strips. What pork substitute can be used? Gai 打开佢。As the pork rests, I want to thank today's sponsor, Green Chef. Green Chef is a CCOF certified organic meal company that makes cooking delicious dinners super. And we move on to the rest of the video. Then we we'll rotate 90 degrees and dice it. It's Ginger chopping skills ginger into are so much better than mine. We'll one one and a half teaspoons of salt, a quarter teaspoon of white pepper, two tablespoons of cornstarch, two tablespoons of water, and optionally a half teaspoon of baking soda to get the pork really tender. Then we'll mix it all together. We have all of these ingredients listed on our blog at madewithlao.com, along with step-by-step -step instructions and video clips to guide you as you make the recipe at home. Ah, with our pork marinated, we'll get a clean cutting board to prepare our garnishes. With those all chopped up, my dad will show you how to prepare the last and definitely not the least important ingredient in this dish, the century egg. We'll peel the century eggs like regular hard-boiled eggs. First, we'll crack the outside shell on our cutting board. Then we'll carefully remove the shell off of the egg. For those unfamiliar with it, century egg, or pei dan in Cantonese, is a centuries-old Chinese ingredient that is traditionally created by preserving duck eggs in a special curing mixture, including clay, ash, and salt, amongst a variety of other elements. Don't be too worried about the name, though, because the curing process for century eggs usually only takes months or even weeks, after which the egg white will have turned black and the yolk will be dark green. Despite its shocking appearance to the uninitiated, century eggs are enjoyed by millions of people for the intense flavor of the yolk and the chewy texture of the egg 
egg white. Whether it's eaten as an appetizer over some silken tofu or as an ingredient in kanji. With the first egg, we'll cut it into wedges. With the other two, we'll cut them first into wedges, then rotate to cut into smaller pieces. With the eggs cut, we're ready to return to our kanji, which has been cooking for 20 minutes. Ooh. You might recognize this from our chicken kanji recipe, but my dad's about to share what I believe is a revolutionary trick to drastically cut down the time it typically takes to make kanji. My dad adds a bit more water here, about four ounces, but this depends on your preferred thickness of kanji. We like it a bit thinner than this because it's less likely to stick to the pot and our other ingredients will already thicken it a bit. Now that our kanji is pretty much cooked, my dad will show you how to properly add the pork. After about three minutes, or when the pork fully turns from pink to the lightest brown, we can turn the heat to low and have a taste. Okay, what is the best water to rice ratio? With our flavoring and consistency perfect, we'll finally add the small pieces of century egg. We'll gently mix the century egg into the kanji to ensure the small pieces don't break apart. After 30 seconds, we'll turn off the stove and transfer the kanji to a serving bowl. Then we'll top the kanji with our century egg wedges along with our cilantro and green onions. Did you eat this right? All right, so now it's been about 20 minutes. We're going to switch back to our live cooking part of the show. And give me a moment and we will get this party started again. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> All right, here we go. Down to just about 30 minutes. We'll start this hot warming classic with my dad. All right, so my timer just rang. It's been 20 minutes of this cooking on medium heat, and this is where we are going to use Daddy Lao's secret trick to quicken up our kanji. So usually this pot of kanji would be simmer simmering and boiling for hours, but it's been just around 30 minutes. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a whisk to break up some of this rice that has already started to bloom, but we're gonna break it up to make it silkier and smoother. And 
my scatterbrained self um, forgot to bring the whisk with me to my friend's place, so she doesn't have one. So I am actually going to be using a fork in the place of a whisk. So if you had an actual whisk, this would probably be easier. Um, oh, and also here, I would turn the heat down to a little lower. So here we go. So I might need to whisk mine for a little bit longer than you do since I'm not using a proper whisk. But I can already see that the rice has started to bloom. Oh, I'm so excited. Be careful while you're whisking. You don't want to splash yourself, which is what I just did. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with my kanji thus far. So now we are going to move on to almost the last step, which is to add pork and cook a little bit more. So now the heat is already on low. So you can still see that it's simmering. And I've whisked my kanji. And so now I'm going to drop little spoonfuls of pork in and have it cook for another three minutes or so. So usually the smaller the better. Let me actually get a better spoon than this. I think if I use a little metal spoon, it'll be better. Okay, here we go. And don't worry if your kanji looks a little watery right now, because this is still going to be boiling after we add in all of our meat for another three minutes, which means that this will really start to simmer down. And I think the next time I make this, while I'm dropping in my little pork meatballs, this is where I would be listening to like a podcast or an audiobook. Because I tend to get very bored. <laughs> So while I am dropping in um, the meatballs, um, I will go ahead and get some, give some podcast the recommendations. Is really what lends each bite this wonderful savoriness. So um, again, the little bites of pork are going to like pack little pops of flavor into the kanji as you spoon it into your mouth later. Um, but the kanji itself should also be lightly savory since this is a dish that we're eating basically um, by itself with, because um, usually, right, in Chinese cooking, you would have a very strongly flavored like meat or vegetable dish paired with white rice. But since this is a bowl unto itself, um, all of our salt and fat and umami is going to be kind of baked or boiled in. So in terms of podcasts, if you guys like podcasts and are interested in Chinese culture in general, I would really recommend, um, so there are two by the same person. So the first is called the Romance of the Three Kingdoms podcast, and the second is called the Water Margin podcast. So they're both created by 
um, uh, this guy named John Zhu. He's also a good friend of mine from Durham. Um, and he, you know, was born and raised in China. And we have this like really cool tradition of oral storytelling. And these two stories are two of the four great classics of Chinese literature. So Sida um, Ming And what John has done is taken these stories and like told them episodically in very colloquial English, um, and it's hilarious. Uh, so if you are either a Chinese culture appreciator or just like story podcasts in general, I would definitely look those two up. So I'll pop those into the chat um, in case you want to Google them. And then just about now, we are finishing up our meatball. So I'm going to hand it back to pre-recorded me. So we have dropped all of our tiny meatballs into our kanji. So I'm gonna give it one last final stir to kind of break up some of the larger pieces. And then I'm gonna grab my timer and we're gonna cook on low heat for another three minutes. Senten zhong, three minutes. And we're going to be stirring occasionally while that's happening. Just to make sure that the kanji doesn't stick. And as you see, the kanji has already started to thicken up. Oh, and it's gonna be so, so good. So at this point, this is where you would add in more boiling water if you preferred your kanji um, a little thinner. So this is completely preference. The consistency that it is at right now is actually the the consistency that I prefer. I sort of like um, my kanji kind of more, what's the word, um, kind of, yeah, just like thicker with each bite. And so at this point, we are going to wait until our meat is completely cooked, and then we are going to start adding the century egg. So we're gonna keep stirring. Oh, I want to taste it already. <laughs> it already looks so sulky. So I'm actually going to give it a quick taste. So you can see that there's already bits of ginger and meat. Let me blow on this. Mmm, it already tastes so good.
so we're almost there. I'm a little impatient. I almost want to jump the gun. <laughs> but I went ahead and also grabbed the bowl I will be serving the congee in. And we're gonna wanna keep stirring to make sure it doesn't stick to the bottom of our pot. All right, I don't know why it went past zero, but it's been, <laughs> it's been two minutes, so. We are going to finish our kanji off by tossing in the egg bits. Toss! Alright. So, I am also going to toss in these beautiful century egg bits. And again, these are already ready to be eaten. So they don't really need to be cooked. We're just gonna stir them in to incorporate them. Okay, and now we're gonna turn our heat off. And we are ready. So we are just going to plate and serve. So I'm gonna use this handmade bowl here that Annabelle made. And because I don't have a ladle, I'm going to use this little scoop. All right. Oh, this looks so good. Okay. So I'm going to bring it over to our other table to finish off. All right. And so the last thing we're going to do is we are going to, oof, goodness put our century egg slices on top. And then sprinkle some green onions. And there we go. Pi dan. Shou, zhou, zhou. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah. All right, so that was my version. So. I like my kanji almost like kind of like thick and um, almost like porridge like, like oatmeal porridge like. And some people like there is much more sippable. So if you are in the latter camp, definitely put some more hot water in before you serve. But yes, that is the pidan shorojo, or in Chinese it would be pida shorojo recipe um, that I adapted from the Made with Lao original recipe. And I hope you liked it as much as I did. Um, this was just like such a nice pre-Thanksgiving meal and also post-Thanksgiving meal. Um, it felt very light. So Kristen, if you over there are ready, I would love to take a peek at your meal. Um, okay. Did it turn on? Yep, yep. yep. Okay. <laughs> I'm, in video. I'm not sure if we can angle this quite right. How do we see ourselves? Why are we not seeing ourselves? Okay. One second, technical difficulties. No worries, no worries. Let me oh, yeah, you're seeing right? our shoulders. Excellent. Excellent. That's perfect. Ooh, that looks great. Oh, I think I see some cilantro in there as well. That is beautiful. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> thank you so much for joining me for class. I'm so excited for you to try it. Well, thank you very much. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, um, have a good rest of your holiday weekend. Um, I don't know, like if you do Cyber Monday, shop the Cyber <laughs> Monday deal. And yeah, um, happy early, like next holiday. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Take care. Thanks so All much. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.